Uh, All right, 3.15 the time. I'm Rick Roberts. This is the Court of Public Opinion, your voice, your opinion, your attitude on the issues of the day. Talking with uh, Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton, probably one of the busiest men in Texas, um, and he just got through telling you that you didn't see it on the news channels. I didn't see it. I immerse myself in the news, you know, five, six days a week. You know, I try to try to get out of it Saturday and Sunday just so I don't drive everybody nuts. But uh, I didn't know that. I didn't. You know, my my idea was, you know, control, secure the southern border, and then let's deal with this realistically. We've got an illegal immigration problem um, in no small part because of our inaction on uh, getting anything done. Uh, Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton uh, was it a good meeting with President Trump? I mean, is he is he where are we at on this thing? So you know what it was. I was really encouraged. First of all, the fact that he called the meeting together with 15 leaders from around the country, and they, you know, we had law enforcement people there. We had victims. Uh, one mother whose son had been killed by an illegal. We had uh, senators there, U.S. senators, congressmen. We had another AG, uh, Attorney General from Arkansas. We had General Sessions there. You know, the uh, right. United States trade. And we had a great discussion about what we cared about, and it really came down to really simple issues like let's secure the border first, let's deal with our sanctuary city issue that's, you know, exploding in the United States. Those were two of the highlights of what we talked about. The president is clearly engaged on both of those issues. Now, see, it it seems, you know, to me, I'm not in the big middle of it like you are, but to me, you you now have, I think, some political will to uh, create maintain and control a southern border uh, that's going to take a little while one that once that is complete you deal with a sanctuary city problem which in itself uh, if you complete this it kind of goes away on its own you start vetting people instead of deporting people and if you're not a criminal if you're not a gangbanger human trafficker but whatever it happens to be obviously they got to go everybody else okay we're not going to give you citizenship but uh, we're not going to come uh, knocking on your door at midnight work go to school what you need to do work on your citizenship as uh, as you have time and it seems to me that that that's the way to go i know people hate me for saying that but you can't wiggle your nose and change the current situation right yeah i mean what, what we're what's being proposed is really not that i don't think should be that controversial you're talking about securing your border which finally trump has, has allowed his own people to to do and it's starting to actually work because our border crossings are way down from when obama was off he wouldn't even let customs and enforcement even do their job right and then if you think about sanctuary city all you're trying to do there is protect citizens from illegals who've committed crimes it's, it's shocking to me that so many cities want to protect those people well the california situation doesn't surprise me i i got uh, you know public notification uh, on sex offenders through finally uh but you know i had to go to sacramento a half a dozen times because well that's not fair it's double jeopardy it's this it's that no it isn't it's uh, all that information's public domain and uh, you know we need to be letting people know if if you're a child sex offender you don't need to live across the street from a daycare center i mean you know the things that you and i would just assume are givens common sense politically it's like pulling teeth trying to get anything done no you're right and that's the sanctuary city issue is one of those things where we're actually spending taxpayer dollars we have cities you know from dallas to houston to san antonio to el paso suing the state because they want illegal criminals to be able to stay here. They want to be able to protect them. I don't know how you justify that uh, in, in any way to your taxpayers. Exactly, exactly. I mean, you know, a lot of people that are here uh, are hardworking, God-fearing. Uh, they came here to try and feed their families, living under a corrupt system in Mexico. Doesn't excuse breaking the immigration law, but I'm a realist. We've got the situation, and again, in no small part, because we didn't do anything to enforce the southern border, so let's at least deal with it and stop. Otherwise, y- your son and mine are going to be talking this same conversation in 30 years. No, you're right. And look, Reagan gave amnesty with the hope that they would secure the border back in 1986. That clearly didn't work because no one ever secured the border. The first thing you have to do is make sure you stop the problem, and then you can then you can address the issue of what you, what do you do with people that are already here. Right. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. Once you secure the border, then you deal with that issue. All right. Um, Texas Attorney General Paxton, uh, here's the headline. 
Texas Attorney General at War with Public Education and Voting. I find that a little hard to believe. Well, you know, it is funny since my mother was an educator. My, my wife is an educator, uh, been a teacher for over 20 years, and a guidance counselor. So it's, it's uh, interesting that they would say that. What they're talking about is uh, my office enforcing the law. As a school administrator or school teacher or principal, whatever, you're not allowed to use taxpayer resources to advocate for any candidate for political office. And my office was tasked with the, the job of enforcing Texas law, which says you can't do that. So there were several school uh, officials around the state that we sent cease and desist orders to stop them from using taxpayer resources to promote a candidate, whether it was Republican or Democrat. Some of them were Republicans. Uh, and so now the papers say that, that that's anti-education. Uh, but in reality, all we're doing there is following the law. And I think doing what uh, most people would think is reasonable, which is, you know, keep the keep the elections out of out of being funded by taxpayer resources at the schools. Yeah, I I knew the, what the, the story was behind the headline, but unfortunately, a lot of people will stop at the headline. I wanted to make sure they knew the knew the whole story. Well, yeah, it's interesting how the, they they grab that headline, and uh, it's as far from the truth as you could possibly be. But that doesn't always get it, get in the way of a, a I guess a, an interesting headline. No, you're you're right. I did a uh, Facebook Live event with uh, Governor Abbott. I don't know a couple of weeks ago. Uh, had a pretty good time, and uh, you know he lines up pretty much where you are on these sanctuary cities and some of the other issues that we're dealing with. So that was good to hear. What's uh, what's uh, on your agenda? I mean, uh, we probably don't have time in a three hour show to go through your daily calendar. But what do you got going on? Well, so one of the biggest things coming up in April is we have a, a, a Supreme, U.S. Supreme Court case on redistricting that comes out of our redistricting efforts in 2011 and 2013. If you can believe, here we are in 2018, still fighting over maps that are going to be redrawn in a couple of years. But it's going to the U.S. Supreme Court. It, our, our maps were struck down by a three-judge panel. And the interesting thing was that the three-judge panel that struck it down, they were the ones that drew the maps. And then we, ad- <laughs> we adopted them. And then when we got sued over them, they said they were uh, unlawful and unconstitutional. So we're now defending the maps they drew. And uh, the good thing is the Supreme Court uh, reversed them on uh, allowing our maps to sit until our case could be heard. Uh, well, that's good news. That's good news. If if people want to touch base, uh, you you have a website. It's uh, TexasAttorneyGeneral.gov, correct? That's correct. That's it. We you know If you send us an email, we'll uh, we'll get back to you. All right. Well, listen, uh, it's always a pleasure. If you ever slow down for an hour in downtown Dallas, give me a yell. We'll have lunch. Um, Of course, I I can imagine that lunch. You're going to be on your cell phone the whole time. Uh, (laughs) Well, we need to take you up on your offer to come to Austin sometime. You should do it. I will. I absolutely will. Uh, I appreciate your time. I appreciate what you're doing for the state. Uh, Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton, thank you so much. Always a pleasure. All right. Uh, Let's uh, step aside very, very quickly. And uh, where are we going here? We're going to Dennis Martin. That's where we're going. Dennis Martin in the WBAP newsroom. Uh, We'll check your afternoon drive as well. What do you think? What do you think about uh, uh, his? Did you hear about his meeting with Trump on Tuesday? I didn't until just now. And what were they talking about? The very thing that we were talking about. You know, if we had news channels that actually gave you the news, you know, it's not news anymore. I know, I got a break. Uh, It's not news anymore. It's presentation. Uh, I think a lot of these uh, news directors in these these television news channels, uh, they just get together. They think they're promoting or, or excuse me, presenting uh, a one-act play. It's not news. It's a presentation uh, with heavily. We all have bias. I get that. We all do. I do, you do, we all do. But when it comes to news, you know, I had the opportunity to sit down in studio with Walter Cronkite. And he stayed for, how long was it? He was supposed to be there 15 minutes. He stayed for over an hour. And I can't think of anything politically I agreed with him on. But man, you can't think of anything that happened in the last half century that he didn't either report on or was a part of. Um, We don't have that anymore. We don't have him anymore. But we we don't have news. I don't know where you get your news. David, where do you, well, it's an all-day thing, isn't it? Uh, yes, it's from when I go to bed until I wake up. There you go. We do it so you don't have to. 
All right, Dennis Martin straight ahead. Then we'll come back, take your calls. Uh, Coming up, I'm a high school student. We can make school safer without curbing gun rights. He's coming up here in just under 30 minutes. You think you're going to see this guy on CNN? No, man. They don't even want to be in the same zip code with this guy because he doesn't further their agenda or their narrative. I'm Rick Roberts, News Talk 820 WBAP.